What if you had to spend your entire life in a bubble? Well, for Jimmy, a boy with a severely compromised immune system, that was a reality. This is his story. Straight out the womb, my boy was in a bubble. It wasn't until the age of four that he was allowed to go home. Of course, due to his condition, he couldn't go to school, so his mother became his teacher. Though, she had awful lessons. Why did the Indians move to reservations? Stay out of the white man's way. Whoa, that is not cool. But don't tell Twitter. Despite the bubble, one could say he had a mostly normal childhood. His mother cared for him, made him yummy food, and even dealt with his bubble bullies. Yeah, here you, go. Come on. you might be wondering how he got food in and out of his bubble. Well, the folks at NASA were kind enough to lend a helping hand. They developed a decontamination unit right into his bubble. This allowed him to eat his mom's delicious home-cooked meals. Nothing could beat mom's homemade, vitamin-rich, soy-based, germ-free, fat-free fiber cookies. Wait, he's a soy boy. Some years pass, and Jimmy's all grown up. Then, one day, a girl moved in next door, Chloe. For Jimmy, it was love at first sight, though he was conflicted about his feelings due to his mother's teachings. Pinocchio came out of his plastic bubble, touched the filthy little next door, and died. Hmm, that's oddly specific and relatable, Mom. Are you sure that's how it went down? Yep. Moving on, we enjoy a refreshing sight as Chloe washes her car. Damn, look at those moves. This gets Jimmy so excited that he, well... <laughs> talk about beating your... Yeah. His mother rushes in and offers some advice. Just do what I tell your father. Repeat the Pledge of Allegiance until it goes away. Hmm, I gotta try that one. Later, we spot Chloe coming home after spending some time with a group of boys. Sus. They make fun of Jimmy and his bubble boy ways before Chloe storms off and decides to pay a visit to Jimmy's house. She slowly inches up towards his room and... What the shit is going on here? I was just playing. Oh, I see Jimmy. Suddenly, Chloe's necklace grabs Jimmy's attention. It's a lovely pair. Hey, wanna see my guitar? It's super duper really cool. I prefer the skin flute, if you know what she means. But actually, Chloe agrees to come back tomorrow. She leaves, and Jimmy is left in a frozen state of happiness. Can't relate. While he stares off into the distance, his mother thoroughly cleans the cooties off of Jimmy's bubble. Unfortunately, she's not very supportive of his choice in friend. Something tells me she's not the kind of friend Jesus would pick. Nonetheless, Jimmy continues to hang with Chloe. First, he teaches her how to play guitar. Harder. Whoa, slow down, Tiger. Suddenly, all the blood rushes out of Jimmy's brain and he has to recite the Pledge of Allegiance again. Are you okay, Jimmy? <laughs> yeah. Then, they go to the beach together. Sorta. They dance, wash their hair, celebrate Halloween, and she even gives him a present. Oh my god! It's just like me! One night, on Chloe's 18th birthday, she sneaks in through the window and is practically begging to get in the bubble with Jimmy. Come on, Jimmy, this might just be worth your life. She makes her way into the decontamination unit, but just before she can enter, she passes out. Mission failed. We'll get him next time. Fast forward to the future and we catch Chloe going to prom with her new douchey boyfriend, Mark. She takes a trip to the bathroom while Mark lights a ciggy and gets awfully close to the bubble. So what are you guys going to do tonight? Apparently they're going to sing and Mark gives us a demonstration. Sounds like fun. Thank you, Mark. Very cool. More time passes and Jimmy catches Mark pestering Chloe outside his window. Come on, it's been two years, babe. I'm waiting until marriage, Mark. Jimmy's rather depressed, but as always, his mother is there to comfort him. All women will leave you someday. It's true. One day, Chloe stops by to make an announcement. Mark proposed. I'm getting married. Goodbye. Based. She walks off, then the both of them can be seen thinking about life. Afterwards, Jimmy decides he's tired of sitting around and sulking. He embarks on a mission. A mission to stop Chloe from getting married to the wrong man. And he only has three days to travel to New York to stop her. To accomplish such a feat, he's going to have to build his very own Iron Man suit. Like, a much, much lamer one. As motivational Rocky music plays in the background, Jimmy completes his suit and takes his first steps. Way to go, champ. He makes it outside and starts running with joy. Yes, he takes plenty of stumbles, but goddammit, he's doing his best. He makes his way to a bus stop and, oh my god, is that Zach Galifianakis? The fat dude from The Hangover? Can I have an autograph? Just kidding, that's the cost of a ride to New York, which is way outside his budget. Please man, I gotta stop this wedding. That's fantastic. Next, next in line please. Feeling defeated, Jimmy begins to walk home, but... Oh geez, fortunately, he was protected by his near indestructible armor. See, I told you, Iron Man. Several of the passengers ran out to check on him and they're all wearing matching outfits. Strange. I need to get to Niagara Falls by Saturday to stop Chloe from getting married, please help. Okay. As they carry him into the bus, Zach Galifianakis looks on with the rage of a thousand sons. In the bus, they sing and dance. Jimmy's having a blast. I guess they're a singing group of some kind. Meanwhile, at home. <gasps> Jimmy! 
Back in the bus, Jimmy's receiving a very weird lesson. These passengers seem to carry some odd beliefs. So much so that Jimmy makes a realization. Wait a minute, you guys aren't singers. You're a cult. <laughs> now stranded, Jimmy wanders around the desert while his parents search for him. Fortunately, luck strikes as Jimmy runs into a biker named Slim who's in the middle of a repair. Whoa, Whoa chill my guy, I'll help you out. Meanwhile, the cult members have reached their destination. They're currently receiving the wisdom of Fabio. The chosen one is among us. The wrong one. Wait a second, we've seen this guy. Back to Jimmy, he fixes up the bike before sharing his story with Slim. Oh, I feel you. I've been in love too. Debbie? Danielle? No. Wildfire! Oh, okay, sure. Yeah, she was dope, but she left me for this dork who had a job and stuff. Some time elapses and the pair have landed in Vegas. They enjoy the sights, gamble, and Jimmy even takes a ride in the crowd. It was a fun side mission, but it's time to get back to business. Jimmy tries his luck at winning a scooter and actually pulls it off. As he rides off, we see that his parents have been closing in this entire time. Saddened by his sudden departure, Slim searches for Jimmy. He ends up running into the cult, who are also in search of the chosen one. Hey, you are the jerks that left my boy behind. They drive off, and in the process, run over poor Slim's bike. Ah! Then, we cut to Jimmy's parents driving around. What in tarnation is that? Was good. Jimmy! Jimmy! Jimmy pulls back, but his parents make chase. Though, my boy gets launched into a nearby train. He passes out and awakens the next morning to find a ragtag group of circus freaks surrounding him. Is that my boy Beetlejuice? Naturally, Jimmy is quite excited and inquisitive, but his new friends tell him to keep quiet or he'll incur the wrath of the doctor, their leader. Suddenly, the train stops and Jimmy is jettisoned out. The formidable leader stares him down, but Jimmy's all laughs. <laughs> Why are you so mini? <laughs> Girls when you're under six foot. I'm that mini. Boys when they're under six foot. Anyway, Mini-Me offers Jimmy a job, but he declines citing his mission for love. No one will love you, bubble boy. Take my card. What's so wrong about my bubble? Then, he yeets him. Oof, he ain't looking so good. Bye. While Jimmy walks off, the freaks follow him, declaring him their new leader. Leave me the heck alone, guys. Okay. Moving on, Jimmy gets a new whip, but this isn't going to last him long. He needs something with a motor. In search of such an elusive vehicle, he finds himself in a bar where he spots an Indian man being harassed by a bunch of mini pants. Soon, they turn their attention to Jimmy and question his bubble. Well, you see, I was born without any immunities. What in tarnation is that? Uh-oh, everybody begins to panic. He's got immunity! No! While they storm out, they end up setting the place ablaze. Though, with the help of Push Pop, the Indian guy, he makes it out safely. Meanwhile, Jimmy's parents have found the traveling circus. His mother attempts to entice their leader with candy so she can find out where Jimmy went. Afterwards, she calls up Chloe and blames her for Jimmy's disappearance. Apparently, he's on his way to your wedding in a bubble suit. Huh? Then, she hangs up before Minimi speaks up. You two aren't going anywhere until I find my freaks. Oh, that's right. They ran off in search of their new leader, Jimmy. <laughs> oh crap, they're here, stealing. Back to Jimmy and Push Pop. <laughs> they end up running over a cow, an event that leaves Push Pop in shambles. Because while in America cows are hamburgers, they're sacred in India. It's a Hindu thing. Google it. Unfortunately, Jimmy is left alone once again as Push Pop stays behind tending to the cow. Though, he at least leaves our boy with a parting present. Ice cream. It's his first time. Wait, stop, don't do that. You're gonna get a brain freeze. <coughs> also, this happens. No! Moving on, Slim has recruited his gang of bikers to help him search for our beloved bubble boy. And Jimmy's parents and Minnie Me have found another car. The biker gang end up running into Push Pop and have a go at his ice cream truck. Then, out of nowhere, the cult people pull up and run over their bikes. While the gang chases after them, we cut to Chloe who's getting fitted in her beautiful wedding dress. If only she knew the absolute level of chaos being carried out in her name. Let's check in with Jimmy. Looks like he's made it quite far on his own, having stumbled into another town. Though, he's about ready to fast forward the rest of the trip. How much for a ride to Niagara Falls? $500. Uh, okay, I guess I gotta go on another side mission. Jimmy enters a club, which just so happens to be offering a $500 reward for the best dancer of the night. Convenient. Oh, hey, I saw the sign about the prize. You want $500? Everybody erupts with excitement as Jimmy's led towards a dance floor. Whoa, wait a second. This ain't a dance floor. Jimmy proceeds to battle it out in a mud-filled arena against two professional wrestlers. Meanwhile, Jimmy's parents, the Chili gang members, and... Oh no, the cult members. They're closer than I thought. They snatch Jimmy up before he has a chance to hop in his ride. Fortunately, the freaks pull up just in time to witness his kidnapping. Jimmy is held hostage and nearly gets his bubble popped, which is a lot less fun than the fruit version of that statement. 
Before that could happen, Jimmy's circus friends pull up in disguises. They roll him the heck out of there, but end up running into the biker gang. No Slim, these are my friends, it's okay. They got him brainwashed! Shortly after, a brawl breaks out between the three groups, but amidst the chaos, Jimmy's able to hitch a ride of the old man. They drive off into the night, and of course, the usual suspects are following. Wait a second, Mini-Me, what are you up to? You little shit. In the morning, Jimmy awakens to discover that the old man drove through the night. Boggers. One problem. He's dead, I think. Jimmy tries to awaken him, but he just stares off into the distance. The situation turns deadly as they speed towards a dead end. At the last second... Now, Jimmy finds himself at a convenience store. Convenient. He uses a payphone to call Chloe, but instead gets Mark. You're a freaking weirdo, bro. You can never have Chloe. The call ends, and Jimmy reflects on the sad state of his condition while friendly cashier flashes him a smile. At wit's end, Jimmy whips out Dr. Freaks, aka mini Me's business card, and gives him a call. Hey doctor, it's me, Jimmy. Jimmy! And with that, Jimmy gives up his location to his mom. Well, now we don't need you. <coughs> Poor guy. Back in the store, Jimmy clumsily grabs himself a beer before pleading with the cashier. I just found a dead guy in the car and my parents are coming to pick me up and this is the girl I love's favorite beer, can I like borrow it please? Yeah, sure. Wow, awfully kind of that lady. Wait a second. Now open the safe! Chop chop! Just outside, Jimmy sips away before his parents pull up. Then, him and his dad wait in the car while mom presumably takes a leak. I bet it was fun out there, huh son? You know? Can you imagine if Neil Armstrong went to the moon but never stepped on the surface? And with those poignant words, his dad lets him go free. Soon after, Jimmy is running from his crazy mom when a whole ass plane pulls up. It's followed by the cult members, the gang members, and the circus members. My god, I wish I was this popular. Oh wait, I am. <laughs> Seriously, thanks. Anyway, you wouldn't guess who the pilot is. Yep, the based boomer. Meanwhile on the ground, Slim ends up running into Jimmy's mom. Slim? Wildfire? Hey, this is awkward. Moving on. With the help of Poppy, Jimmy makes it to Niagara Falls and he falls into the water. But that's okay. He eventually makes it to the wedding just in time. He declares his love for Chloe and emerges from his suit to share a kiss. Unfortunately, her cooties are fatal to him. Jimmy! Psych! Turns out that while he was born with a problem, it rectified itself a long, long time ago. Thanks, Mom. Could have told me that. The pair end up getting married and find themselves celebrating with all the wacky friends Jimmy made along the way. We got Pushpop, who somehow converted the occultist to Hinduism. $500, man. The circus freaks. And oh my god, what happened to his parents? And with that, Jimmy and Chloe lived happily ever after. Hey, tell your mom you love her, and don't forget to brush your teeth. See you next time.